Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is Nico and you're watching Dirty Game. Today we're playing Kingdom Come Deliverance and we're going to be looking at the five worst, uh, lowest damage long swords in Kingdom Come Deliverance. So if you've seen uh, this guide so far, or these guides so far, I've done three other ones. One for maces, short swords, and axes. So this is going to go like that. So we're just going to start at the fifth one, which is the best out of the worst. And work our way down to the first one, which is the worst out of the worst. So let's just get right into it with number five. So at number five, you can see we've got this lovely piece of equipment here called the Saving Grace with a damage rating of 52 and a price point of 192.1. So this one, as you can see, it's a long start. It says, not every knight is born valiant and not every noble is born rich. But both must flaunt their social standing and sometimes their fighting skills too. This is the best longsword a nobleman who's fallen on hard times can afford. A master swordsman can do great things with it, but in inexperienced hands, it will quickly become dull. Because the material of the blade is not the best. So that's that's a great sales pitch there. I can tell whoever wrote that is definitely the salesman for this sword. Uh, it's got a charisma of 5 and a durability of 23, making it pretty miserable in both departments, especially for a longsword. But let's take a look at it on the wheel so we can look at it a little bit closer. So here on the wheel, we can see it's got a light white wrapped grip. I can't tell if that was the stock wrap or if that's just some cloth wrapped over it because the original had wore off. You can see it's pitted all over from rust and uh, it's pretty wore down from being pretty old and used a lot. It does look like there are quite a few impurities in the blade and uh, probably coming from a lower grade iron. Um, yeah, so pretty standard though. I like the cross guard. I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, standard circular pommel down on the bottom. But yeah, that is number five. So it's the best one on this list. It can only get worse from here. Let's move on to number four. So at number four, we have the Merchant's Sword. And you may be surprised to see this on the list, but it actually is not a very good weapon, although it is very common. Uh, this is one of the most common long swords in the game. This one has a damage of 49 and a price point of 414.4. This one says, Transporting goods and coin wasn't exactly a safe business in the Middle Ages. But apart from hiring a mercenary band, uh... There was a cheaper way to protect your investment, a merchant's longsword. So basically it's, you know, a personal defense weapon for merchants. Has a charisma of 10 and a durability of 50. So both of those are actually quite a bit better than the last one. But again, we have a damage of only 49 for both stab and slash. Uh, yeah, nothing remarkable about this one. Let's take a look at it on the wheel. So unlike the last sword, this one isn't old or damaged. It's just not a very good sword. You can see that it's, uh, it looks pretty new and unused. Um... Standard, no fullering. Uh, grip looks a bit thin. I'm not an overly big fan of that. I don't like my grips too wide on my swords, but I also don't like them too thin. So, uh, yeah, that's the Merchant Sword. Let's move on to number three. So at number three, we have the Fear Not, and I'm not sure why it's called that, because if this was the only weapon I had, I would probably have some fear. This one, like the Merchant Sword, has a damage of 49, and this one has a price point of 882.3. This one says... Whoever carries Fear Not into battle will shake off fear before the fight. The robust longsword that could cut even rock. This sword will withstand harsh treatment, but its attack qualities are somewhat limited. And of course what they mean by that is it's got a relatively high durability of 81, uh, but pretty low damage of only 49 for both stab and slash. Uh, it has a charisma of 10, so that's the same as the last one I believe, but let's look at it on the wheel. So here on the wheel, we can see that this is actually somewhat of a fancy looking sword. In fact, the cross guard there looks an awful lot like the one that goes into Henry's sword at the beginning of the game when you're forging the sword. So that's pretty nifty. It's got a pretty plan, uh, plain uh, wooden grip. Doesn't look to be wrapped in anything. Maybe it was initially, but it's not anymore. Plain circular pommel and a there's fullering on the blade. Uh, three, you know, for... A good portion of it so that's interesting looks real nice kind of ornate a lot like the saint george's sword in a way uh the edge of the sword looks pretty dull you know it's it's pretty wide on the edge so it does look pretty dull but yeah not a bad looking sword even though the stats are pretty terrible but let's move on to number two so here for number two we have a significant drop in damage with the robber's sword this one having a damage of only 40 and a price point of 104.7 so not very good it says, a rusty longsword someone's granddad once brought back from his world roaming. There's nothing exceptional about it except its age and universal use, plus the fact that it's quite, uh, it's quite likely to fall to pieces in your hand. So it's got a durability of only 25, so that's extremely low for a sword, and a charisma of 3. So you wear this into town and nobody's going to be impressed. Stab and slash damage of 40. But let's take a look at it on the wheel. So here you can see what we're uh, working with. 
Uh, the cross guard is very interesting to me. It's cylindrical, I guess, in nature with upward curving ends and tiny little hooks on the ends. So not 100% certain where that comes from historically. I do like the pommel. It's got a, uh, I believe that's octagonal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, woohoo, octagonal uh, sides. And uh, it's got a leather-ish looking hilt with wire wrapping around it. So that's pretty fancy, I guess. Uh, blade's pretty similar to the last one and St. George's Sword with the triple fuller ring down the middle. Uh, blade actually doesn't look terrible, but, you know, it does look like it's made of a lower grade metal. Uh, you can see impurities and there's quite a bit of pitting along, you know, the blade and the uh, cross guard. So, yeah, although it does look pretty sharp in the end. Pretty good for jabbing, I would assume. But that is number two, so let's move on to the all-around worst longsword in the game. So for the worst longsword in the game by damage, we have the Thumper. With a damage of 34. A price point of 234.1. Uh, yeah, this one's pretty terrible, I can tell already. It says, A heavy, robust longsword that has endured many battles and will endure, endure many more. Its main advantage is its weight and the quality material of the blade, which could stop even a thunderbolt. That's arguable, considering the durability is only 50. Uh, the charisma of 5. A stab damage of 11, which is pretty damn terrible. And a slash damage of 34, but a pretty high blunt damage of 11, uh, I guess, for a sword. Uh, yeah, the word, the name Thumper just really sells it to me. But let's look at it on the wheel. So, yeah, nothing too impressive here. This is, uh, again, with a lot of these swords, you can see there's a decent amount of pitting on the blade. Uh, cross guards, that cool looking cross guard that we see quite a bit in this game. I do like the hilt. It's got like a stipled wooden grip. That's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, plain circular pommel. Again, we're seeing some pitting. Nothing too impressive here. Uh, with a damage of 34 being its highest damage, and that being for Slash. Uh, yeah, nothing too impressive there. Uh, one complaint I have with the weapons in this game is they, they give it a super low stab damage, but then you see a nice sharp, you know, pointed tip. If they really want to make it bad, why not break the tip off or at least blunt it, you know? So it's, it wouldn't be a good stabbing weapon, because realistically, even if the metal's not great, you could get a couple good jabs in with this one. It, that's a killing, you know, that's a killing point there. But with any case, uh, or in any case, that's the worst longsword in the game. So if you really want to use a longsword, but you really don't want to kill anyone with it, this is the one to go with. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. If you did, I can assume you like the content, and hopefully you'll subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you haven't already, check out these links I have on the screen to see me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you like my content and would like to support what I do here, there's a link to my Patreon account in the description, and a donation would be much appreciated. In any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.